Okay, so now that I've kind of gotten some of the theory away, out of the way, I want to just kind of draw. And I didn't show you this eraser. This is, this guy is also vinyl. He's very pointy. You need to keep your, and he's got an eraser to get the dust off. You need to um, keep your pencils very sharp. And one way to do that is draw at an angle, which creates a lot of nice effects. Most drawings shouldn't be straight up and down, by the way. And it has the added bonus of keeping your pencil sharp. Now just watch what we're doing. We're, we're sort of taking these flat areas. And even though this reference photo is so highly lit that I can't see shadow, I know the basic structure of a face, and I know the basic way that light works. He's going to have a piece on this nostril that kind of gleams. And the only way it can gleam is if everything else is darker than it. Even though I can't see that on my reference photo, I know what it should look like if I want to create the illusion of depth with graphite. Because that's what drawing is. It's all illusion. It's We're taking something 2D and we're making it look like it's 3D. That's my little baby. She's just being a baby. Now... Sort of lost my train of thought there. See, we can take we can take his eye here, and I'm kind of at the phase now where I'm just sort of I've sort of just been moving all around the face, seeing problems and attacking them as they go as I go. <coughs> and if we just create one little boink of light right there, ting, that's going to draw your eye right to it. Your eye is drawn to where the highlights are. See that? That's where your eye is going to go. Looking at it, he's got a kind of kind of angry metal head sort of smug look on his face um, and just to show you how this can work right if you look at his lips his lips are almost done and they're done right everything else just needs to be taken to that level we've got our lightest light we've got a medium light we've got a dark we've got a darkest dark and then we've got black. We've got five levels of value on the lips alone. And wider, broader areas like this will have maybe two. But something that's small and intricate like an eyeball or a lip will have a lot. Now what we do to create the creases on the lips is we just put some vertical lines like this. And with a pencil, you never go straight in and kind of go hard. You start with a softer level I don't mean a I don't mean a darker level. I mean a, a punier level, and you go darker and darker and darker, and you build up your darks, and you smooth them out like that by blending them. Then you take your little micro erasers and you create lights in it, and you blend the lights out. Darks, gray, lights, gray, darks, gray, lights, gray, and you're slowly building up the fatness of the lip by the difference between highlight. And almost highlight. That's basically the philosophy of flesh. And it doesn't matter whether you're using colored pencils, paints, or pencils. And that's why drawing is a very good place to start because when you have paint you have the added variable of color. And people will put down pink and they'll think well this is lighter because it's pink than my blue. When in reality if they took a black and white photo of it they'd be the same value level and they have a flat painting and they don't know why and that's why so we're going to take our micro eraser here and I'm just going to show you how we can add some depth by erasing because it really is 50% of the work see we're creating we're doing two things we're taking some deep shadows out of eyebrows because eyebrows have shadows but not that much and we're creating the white, the strawberry blonde hairs in the eyebrows. The reason eyebrows don't have a lot of shadows is you always have to think about bone structure. We have this bone here where the eyebrow ridge is. It's one of the most prominent bones on the face. See that? And I'm actually creating depth to him with my eraser right now. That's good. That needs to be a very light spot. He's got that prominent Anglo kind of eyebrow. And the eyebrow is in the center of that bone. So 100% of the shadow in the eyebrow is the hair. 
if you if you were to shave an eyebrow off, it would be extremely light because it's sticking so far out there. So you need to have that differential between the hairs, the shadows of the hairs, and the light from the bone. Now, a trick with your mechanical pencil, when you have tedious areas of hair, that's where it really comes in handy. So the way I can make these strawberry blonde eyebrow hairs stick out is by coming back in with a mechanical pencil and creating these really fine lines. And where the fine lines aren't, your eye pretends like those are lighter hairs. He has a especially hard hair. Very curly dark afro hair is easy. Very, no hair is easy. Easier. Very light straight blonde hair is easier. Wavy red hair is just about the hardest. And that's what I did. So, and the reason is because there's so much interplay between There's sort of a trick to straight hair. There's sort of a trick to afro hair. But here we've got to create the illusion of different flow of light and shadow in each little region. So we just have to be more tedious with this hair. That, that'll be a separate video. See, what we're doing here is one of the darkest parts on the face is this. If a lip is closed, right here where the top lip, not the line of the lips, but right here where the top lip hits the bottom. Usually a face is lit from above. So there's this level of shadow on the underside of the top lip. Not at the, not at the little sucker button on the tip, but everywhere else. And the bottom lip right under it does not have that shadow. It only has the casted shadow from the top lip. So we put this little line of light on the bottom lip, and poof. And he's got a pouty lip, so we can, we can exaggerate that. What I like to do is make people into caricatures by not exaggerating the goofy parts of them, like a classical caricature, but by exaggerating the beautiful parts of them. So I try to take people with unique sort of features and making their unique features showing that their unique features are what make them beautiful. And there's a certain way to exaggerate those to do so. Now the, the, the end of the nose, you can't over exaggerate. The end of the nose, with especially with a white person, has this line going all the way up it that gets lighter and lighter and lighter towards the tip. And what you do is you can take your eraser and create a perfect little white spot and then just slide it up and take the pressure off as you go. This little nylon eraser, did I say nylon again? I, I think I've always for my whole life confused the word vinyl and nylon. I don't think they have anything to do with each other, but that's, that's just me. Now, this little tortillion without graphite on it is the one I want here because this graphite here, I don't want to pull it in to the center of his nose. If I used one that was already dirty, I'd be drawing with it. What I really want to do is soften the edge. So I use one that doesn't have. See that? And the Kleenex will take your fat, wide areas and blend them. The Tortillion will take your smaller areas and blend them. If you push too hard with a pencil, or Tortillion, an eraser, or anything, you are creating a valley in your painting, or in your drawing. And you need to be aware of that, because you can't undo a valley. It's there for good. So that's all for this one. Um, I did very little in terms of drawing, except to explain how it is that I'm going to achieve what it is I want. And I guess what I really want you to take away is the power of the eraser and uh, the blending sticks. Your pencil is not your primary. Your pencil is what puts value down. What puts shape down is your eraser and your blender. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, after watching just a little bit of it. Thanks for watching, and we will probably do more of these later. I'll show you the finished prod project uh, after I get them done. Thanks.